Hey y'all, my name is Lucy Ballard. I'm coming to you from the great state of North Carolina where I'm surrounded by beautiful mountains and a pasture full of happy cows. Today I want to talk about storytelling. My family loves to tell stories. When we all gather around the dinner table, especially during Christmas or Thanksgiving, it's hardly five seconds before someone is reminiscing about a funny thing <laughs> that happened way back when. And my dad is actually the best of us all. He is just this endless trove of stories, some silly, some miraculous, some heartbreaking. But we'll beg him to tell one of these stories, you know, about the time, for example, he and his youth group was hiking in the mountains and they were miraculously saved uh, from a blizzard. Or, you know, the, the day my baby brother was born, stories like that. But over and over again, we'll tell these stories year after year, and yet they give us the same feelings, the same emotions, sometimes the same belly laughs, um, every time. It's this kind of ritual that we repeat. Um, and it really leaves all of us, my brothers, grandma, you know, all of us, the whole crew, really feeling connected with one another and more grounded in our shared history as a family. And maybe your family and friends do the exact same thing. Um, in fact, maybe you're the family storyteller. But I have a question for you. Why do you think storytelling is so important for, uh, for people? Why do you think we tell so many stories and tell them over and over again? For example, about how the world came to be, like in the story of, uh, of Genesis, or why we have so many different kinds of animals, like in the story of Noah's Ark, or about how we should behave towards one another and love one another. Um, like Jesus shows us how to live in the Gospels. I think we tell stories to remember fun times. Um, sometimes stories make us laugh or cry. We tell stories to keep the memories of our lost loved ones alive um, in our hearts and in our communities. I think we tell stories to, to ground us and make us feel more confident and secure in, in who we are. Um, also, we tell stories to help us learn about the experiences of others. For example, like when we watch movies or read books about people that are different from us. And often, I think, too, we read stories uh, or tell stories to, to make us uh, feel uncomfortable with the way that the world used to be or things about the world that make us uncomfortable right now. And that can inspire us to make changes in the world. So today, I want to share um, with y'all one of my family's stories that has taught me a lot and has really stayed with me. Um, and since it is Father's Day, I'm going to turn, uh, turn it over to my dear old dad, Tim Ballard. So without further ado. My grandma and grandpa met each other back when she was a flapper and he was visiting gin joints. They knew each other a long, long time and were married for 40 years. When he got sick in his 70s, she basically took care of his every need every day for a year or more. When he passed away, my grandma, who always was a cheerful, happy, optimistic, see the best in the world kind of person, went into a really deep funk to the point where my mother and sisters, her sisters, took him, took grandma to a uh, mental health facility because she was just so deeply depressed. And uh, she was that way for a good year, just not herself. And um, we didn't really know what to do about it. So we went down to her house on Sunday for lunch, like we did three month, three uh, times a month. And she was her old self again. She was chipper and funny and carrying on like she always did. So we asked her over the table, what, uh, what's up? What's happened to you? What's going on? She said, I'm going to tell y'all a story and you simply are not going to believe it. Um, but I know that it was true. I woke up sometime in the night, um, wide awake, and there sitting on the foot of my bed was an angel. I wasn't scared. I just looked at him, and the angel said, Floyd, it's time for you to trim your wick. And he was gone, just like that. And I sat there a good part of the night, just puzzling over what in the world just happened. Sometime along in the wee hours, I fell back to sleep, and when I woke up this morning, I knew what the angel meant. It gets me every time. So back in the day, 
when the lamps and the, the candles were burning poorly. Our job as children was to go out, clean all the globes, trim all the wicks back, and clean the globes. And when you did that, it made your lamps glow brighter. And all of a sudden I knew that I had not let my light glow. She said, true story. And who am I to doubt? Angels. So I love that story for a lot of reasons. And as you could see, it, it moves my dad and me and my family in a lot of really deep and meaningful ways. But I wanted to focus a little bit on this idea that he talked about in the story about trimming your wick. I think this idea of trimming the wick on your lamp when the oil runs low, it, it really reminds me that even when we are experiencing dark moments, like my great grandma, um, even when bad things happen, when we don't feel any hope at all, God may still be calling us to get up and get to work to keep on living and to live better and, and more fully than we did before. Um, to really trim our wick and shine our light once again. Um, just like in Jesus's parable about taking our light out from under that bushel um, and really shining it for the world. And another way this story really um, is meaningful to me is that this story actually teaches me <laughs> to love stories and to want to tell more stories. Um, I think it's not only important to listen to stories, but to be empowered to tell our own. Um, each of us has a story to tell. We all have different lives and unique experiences. And in fact, across history, it's often been young people who have found their voices and led their communities to becoming more welcoming, more just, more inclusive, more loving. And then I think too, when we hear stories about others standing up for what is right, like all of the people who are protesting now and who have protested and fought in the past for racial justice in the United States, I think we, we see those stories and hear those experiences and, and it might actually lead us to become a little more brave, a little more courageous, and really be able to take action and help others because we don't feel so alone anymore in our struggles and we don't want others to feel alone. So now that I've heard this story again today, um, maybe stories of other people being strong and courageous are kind of like that angel that visited my great grandma telling us to, to rise up, to shake off those feelings that keep us down and get in the way of us making a positive impact in the world and to really start fighting for what's right and, and to live right. What stories will be told about the time that we're living in now? How will you tell your story? Or the story of your family, the story of our church at Harvard Epworth, the story of our nation? How do we make sure that our story reflects the old, old story of Jesus and his love. So today as we celebrate all the dads out there and all those who have loved and been father figures to, to people throughout their lives, uh, maybe you and your family might tonight or this coming week share a couple of those great old family stories, some of the goofy and silly moments, moments of triumph, moments of failure, memories of friends and family. And maybe too, you might seek out a new story from someone uh, who is different from you, one you've never heard before, maybe in a book or a movie or a news article. Because just as our church community at Harvard Epworth is guided by the story of Jesus and his love, so should we in our individual lives strive to hear the stories of others and also be brave enough to tell our own. Um, I think learning more about ourselves and others through storytelling actually helps us to grow together as a community and to really um, be the community that God wants us to be. Happy Father's Day from the Ballards. And have a wonderful week of storytelling. <laughs>